If you're hiring a contractor, you have to know what the right questions are to even ask. Building out a commercial space is often a new experience for most business owners. If you haven't been through the process before, it can actually be quite daunting. However, if you know what you should be asking your commercial contractor prior to getting the process started, you should feel more at peace with the entire operation. So here's a list of 18 questions that every small business owner must ask before hiring a commercial contractor. And this is whether your project is new construction or a commercial renovation. Number one, how long have you been in business? It's important that you work with a general contractor that has been in business for a longer period of time or has enough experience to professionally handle your build out. General contracting can very much be a fly-by-night type of industry, which could leave you exposed to poor construction or an undelivered build-out. Number two, have you worked on projects similar to ours? You don't wanna hire a residential contractor to perform commercial construction. And not every commercial construction company may be a fit for exactly what you need. If a company specializes in building out office space or commercial renovations for tenants, they likely wouldn't be the best bet to build a new construction warehouse. Number three, do you have project managers and strong subcontractors? General contractors are often only as good as their weakest subs. If they're unable to get the subcontractors out on site to perform the work necessary to deliver you a high quality project on time, you should explore other options. Having a project manager overseeing the work is also crucial to ensuring the work is done properly. Number four, are you licensed, bonded, and insured? Depending on the state, your general contractor may not have to be licensed, bonded, and insured, which really leaves you vulnerable to not only shoddy workmanship, but also dangerous conditions. We recommend your contractor be licensed, bonded, and insured, even on a minor project like a commercial office renovation. Ask to see your contractor's licensing and proof of insurance prior to hiring them. Number five, how long will this build out process take? It's important that you both set expectations on the timeline to build the space out on the front end. Make sure the contractor commits to a delivery date and have penalties and consequences in your contract if they don't hit that mark. Number six, what is your payment schedule? You should know how the contractor is going to bill for this project. Never pay for the project up front. I will repeat, don't ever pay the whole project in full upfront ever. That is a recipe for disaster. Instead, start with a down payment, progress payments, and then a final payment. Discuss what you will require from them in order to make that final payment, such as a certificate of occupancy, and spell it out in the contract. You may want to get an attorney involved. Number seven, what sets you apart from your competitors? Experienced commercial construction companies often have strong connections to the city, which could help expedite the process, as well as better project managers, subcontractors, etc. Depending on the size of the project, hiring a highly active contractor can be ideal since they keep their subcontractors busy. If a subcontractor sits idle for too long, they'll go find another job. Number eight, who will be designing the plans? Does the contractor use its own engineers and architects or are they outsourcing the work to a third party? You may also want to work directly with your own space planner or architect and have them provide the construction plans to the contractor. Some of the better contractors that we've worked with on smaller spaces have been design build where they handle everything in house. Number nine, how soon can we get this project started? Contractors will need time to line up bids after they've received plans from the architect or space planner, and these timelines can vary drastically, depending on whether you're needing a completely new build out or a simple renovation. From there, they'll schedule the subs and put together a timeline for completion. The sooner the contractor can get everything they need, including permits from the city, the sooner they can get started. Number 10, do you guarantee and provide warranties for your work? Materials tend to settle after new construction. Wood framing loses a significant portion of its mass in the first year after installation due to water evaporation, which can cause drywall nails to pop and cracks even if the contractor is the best in the business. It just naturally happens. Make sure the contractor guarantees the quality of their work and offers warranties on anything they install on the property. Number 11, were your last three projects like this one delivered on time? 
Construction is notorious for missing deadlines and delivering late. We've all heard the jokes. If your contractor has a consistent track record of delivering on time or at least close to it, they're likely going to do the same on your project. However, if they consistently miss deadlines, expect them to miss yours too. Number 12, how do you ensure project costs? Contractors will typically lock in their pricing with subcontractors for a period of time after your initial bid. Make sure you commence the project within that timeline or your pricing could change. Be careful with how the contract is written. They could be incentivized to have cost overruns if they're collecting a percentage of the total project cost. You could simply just do a flat fee for the whole project, which is called cost plus. Number 13, do you have a claim record? Contractors get sued all the time, whether they were in the wrong or not. Get access to their claim record if possible to see how these lawsuits and claims were handled. Some clients can be unreasonably upset and sue at the drop of a hat, but some have rightfully pursued legal remedies. You don't want to get into a situation where you're having to hire an attorney to sue a contractor who just left your job half finished. Number 14, do you keep a job safety record? Attention to detail and safety is paramount when working in construction. Having a strong safety record shows that the contractor cares about their employees, which is a signal that they'll care about getting your job right. If they have a poor safety record, it likely means they'll try and cut corners where they can, which means you'll get a second class job. Number 15, can you provide references for businesses similar to mine? If your contractor is experienced in the type of project you're looking to work with them on, they should have no issue providing references. Call these past clients to gather what it was like working on a project with that contractor. You simply never know what you're gonna learn directly from their customers. Number 16, are your suppliers local? If suppliers are local, that means the contractor will have far more control over having materials delivered to the project on time. If they're sourcing supplies from out of state, there's no telling what kind of delays could be incurred through transit, embargoes, etc. Plus, we all like shopping local, right? Number 17, is your bid an estimate of project costs or a fixed price? Make sure you understand what you're getting into when you hire the contractor. If they only provided you with an estimate of their total costs, your budget could get thrown off fairly quickly. You'll want to have your costs fixed prior to moving forward so that you can limit your chance of having any overruns whatsoever. Number 18, what does your schedule look like at the moment? Your contractor could be the best fit in the world, but if they're booked out for the next six months, it probably doesn't matter. Ask your contractor how their schedule looks so you know they will have the capacity to get your job done when you need it done. If you're looking into the build-out process, chances are you may need to negotiate some tenant improvement allowances. Check out this video here for how the landlord could actually help contribute towards your build-out, and I'll see you there.